got a, a question from one of the members of the Organic Chemistry Help Facebook group. So before we get started, just uh, give me a wave or a thumbs up if you can hear me okay. I'll just check out in the chat, see uh, what people are saying. Um, just a reminder, Workout Wednesdays happen 8 p.m. Eastern. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to send them through during the week. You can send them to me on Instagram. You can get on the Facebook group, uh, Organic Chemistry Help. You can um, send them to me by direct message if you like. But if you send them as an Instagram story or as a um, um, Instagram post and then you uh, at mention me, then uh, I'll give you a free copy of my um organic chemistry structure drawing templates so there's a little incentive to go and um, post your questions onto instagram via a, a, a post or a instagram live uh, instagram story so uh, i've got a few people um joining in so thanks uh, everyone for joining in on instagram or across uh youtube or facebook um i'll just get up my comments app here so feel free to drop a comment in if you have any last minute questions, drop them in the chat. It's a little bit hard to answer questions without a picture, which is hard to get to me uh, via a chat. But if you have something simple, then I can go through it on the live stream. Um, so, yeah, just another reminder, 8 p.m. Wednesdays is when we aim for, unless I've got uh, technical issues, in which case we sometimes go um, a little bit later. All right, so the theme of today's um, Workout Wednesday is non-classical carbocations. So these are um, a bit more of an advanced concept. So if you're a bit uh, unsure about this, if you like, if it all looks very foreign, then don't worry about it uh, too much. It may be something that you don't cover in your course or you're something that you cover later on at another point. And um, so, yeah, it just depends on where you're at with your organic chemistry studies. So I'm going to move my uh, picture out of the way. So we've got the question up here. So the question came to me via the Organic Chemistry Help Facebook group. It is um, from Kamal. So um, I'll just make sure that this is uh, streaming okay. Oh, there we go. There's the picture moving across. Um, so the question is related to a type of compound called a norbornane. So this, uh, there's two, two compounds here. So there's uh, norbornyl, a uh, two norbornyl brosolate. So what is a brosolate? It is a leaving group, a little bit similar to a tosylate or a mesolate. So BS, funny abbreviation, this one, is the uh, sort of bromine analog of a tosylate. So we have a benzene ring with a bromine in the power position, and then a SO2, and then we connect that to our oxygen to form the leaving group. So back in the day, back in the, um, I guess, previous decades of organic chemistry, people had a need to study mechanisms using leaving groups of really different abilities. So tosylate, mesylate, brosylate, um, there's a whole bunch of other ones that were used where we changed the ability of that group to act as a leaving group by changing its electronic profile and making it more or less likely to, to leave. Okay, so really all we need to know is that the brosylate is a leaving group. And in this particular reaction, I haven't written down the reagents, it is acetic acid and potassium acetate. Um, so once again, this question was posed by Kamal over a uh, direct message, and I think he also posted it to the Organic Chemistry Help Facebook group. And the question is around the speed and the results of a solvolysis reaction of these brosylates using acetic acid and potassium acetate. So when you do this with the exo compound, you get a fast reaction and you get racemization, complete racemization. So we go from one enantiomer to a 50-50 mixture of enantiomers of the product. Whereas with the endo isomer, uh, that results in the uh, reaction being very slow, much slower. I think it's around 350 times slower than the exoisomer. And uh, the reaction gives 93% racemization. So there's a little bit of conservation 
of a which stereochemistry, which enantiomer we have. Okay, so this is um, a case of what I've... Uh, what has been known as the non-classical carbocation. And it was a raging debate in organic chemistry for many years. And I think overall now people believe that non-classical carbocations do um, actually exist. And so let's just go through the how this works. So one of the important things to recognize here is that when we talk about the two enantiomers of this exo compound, we could draw the two enantiomers like this. So here I've got the norbornane system with the brosylate leaving group and the mirror image of that would be where we draw the brosylate over here we go down like this and I, I find these difficult to draw as well so don't worry if you also have problems but the enantiomer is going to look like that okay so how on earth do you get that from this um, solvolysis reaction well what we could imagine is that the brosylate leaves and then we get a carbocation. Now, what can carbocations do? They can rearrange. And so if I do a solvolysis where we lose that uh, leaving group like this, then we're going to get a carbocation that looks like this. So I'll just draw it a little bit further to the left here. So there's our bicyclic system. Carbocation like that. And um, that carbocation can undergo rearrangements. And so if we think about it in sort of our, our normal 1-2 alkyl shift way of thinking about carbocation rearrangements, we've got a group here that can shift across there to generate a new carbocation. So the carbon that's shifting from would be left with the positive charge. So if that shifted, we would get to a compound that looked like this so uh, carbocation, whoops, made a mistake. So we'd have that, and now this would be bonded over there. Okay, and um, we would have our positive charge on that carbon there. And it turns out that it doesn't look the same, but this is um, very much equivalent to what we, we had before, but it's enantiomeric. So when the um, solvent attacks this when the acetic acid attacks this if it attacks from the side opposite to the larger group so we're going to get attack from so if we look at this carbocation we're going to get attack of the nucleophile from the top face like this um, then and that's because it's going to come away uh, it's going to come on the same side as this smaller bridge the one carbon bridge rather than the two carbon bridge then when we have this rearranged carbocation, uh, that is actually a, a equivalent in structure but enantiomeric to what we had before. And so when we get attack of the solvent, we'll get the enantiomeric product. Okay, so um, that's the sort of simplistic view of this, but really a better way of looking at it is that when the leaving group departs, we can actually assist that process with the alkyl group migrating at the same time. So let's just scratch out some of this workings here and imagine instead that we have, as that leaving group departs, imagine we've got this, um, I'll draw it in a different color, we've got a sigma star orbital that's pointing out directly away from the CO bond that's breaking and that can overlap with the sigma bond um, of an adjacent carbon-carbon bond within the system. So that partial overlap can turn into a more substantial overlap as the leaving group departs. So we can actually imagine this group coming across here as that group departs. Now, what does that get us? It gets us to that other enantiomer of the um, carbocation that we were talking about. So when people looked at this, the mechanism for this reaction, they then went, well... Um, could we have something that is not going in between the two possible carbocations? So it's not um, shifting the alkyl group back and forth between the two possibilities, but is that uh, carbon atom actually shared across the two sides? And so we can imagine a case where, and let me just try to draw this. It's um, not something I've drawn for a while, but um, we draw a intermediate carbocation that might look like this where we have 
Okay. Up to that bond there. Oops, we'll just do that again. Okay. Down there like that. Across there. And then this group that's migrating could actually be sharing a um, sort of partially bonded to both of those sites that could be uh, a carbocation. So this is what became known as a non-classical carbocation. And there's a lot of debate about whether this was a stable intermediate or whether this was a transition state between the two extreme carbocations. And there was a lot of experiments done to try and test this, things like um, isotopic labeling of the various carbon atoms around the ring and looking at where they end up in the product and so on. But one of the first experiments that pointed towards this was to do with this racemization of the exoisomer uh, versus the endoisomer not completely racemizing. And so uh, this is a uh, case where we have what's called a three-centered two-electron bond. So there's only two electrons being shared between three different carbon atoms. And, and so this ignited a lot of debate. And so when the um, acetate comes in, it can either come in like this at that end, or it can come in like this at that end. And so we get, and one of those will lead to one enantiomer, the other one will lead to the other enantiomer. And because this non-classical carbocation is symmetrical, we'll get an evil amount of both, and so the, the racemate. Now, if we compare that to the endo isomer, we've got uh, a different arrangement of the atoms. So we've got the leaving group is pointing down like this, and its sigma star orbital, well, let me just uh, draw that in blue to make it clearer, so its sigma star orbital can't overlap with an adjacent carbon-carbon sigma bond. Okay, it might look a little bit like this uh, carbon bridge um, over here can, but it's not lined up perfectly to overlap with that sigma star orbital, and so we can't get the same sort of um, non-classical carbocation. And so when this brosolate leaves, it is um, not being assisted uh, in that process, and so it's much slower. So we get that bond being cleaved much slower. Okay, and um, when it does cleave, we're going to generate a carbocation that is um, not, you know, a, um, a non-classical carbocation, or it's not, it, well, it, when it does leave, it can ge then generate a non-classical carbocation, but it is not being assisted in that, uh, in the leaving group leaving. Okay, so what then happens is that when this uh, group leaves, it can actually form a um, it, it can actually form a iron pair that then gets attacked to a certain extent from the opposite side by the nucleophile, and so there's a little bit of inversion of configuration from the endo to the exo that gives us that little bit of product that is not completely racemized. Okay. So uh, let's see if I can just show that. So we get to a situation where we have this, where it's being, and sorry about the running out of room here, but we've got the um, carbocation with that brosolate uh, tightly associated with it on that bottom face. And so when the acetate comes in, it can come in from that side and we get a little bit of inversion and configuration, a little bit like an SN2 sort of reaction. Okay, so hopefully that cleared up. This is definitely an advanced topic, so many of you probably either won't cover non-classical carbocations or you would cover them in a, an, an advanced part of your course. So um, hopefully if you are covering this sort of thing in your course, then it helped you understand a little bit about this uh, type of topic. So I'm going to go back through the comments and see whether anyone's uh, got any other questions. Give us a thumbs up if you uh, got anything out of that. It's um, definitely um, an important topic within the history of organic chemistry, but it's not taught in a lot of organic chemistry courses. Okay, so um, just going back through the comments. Thanks for everyone for joining. Um, 
that's where I'm going to leave it today. Just a nice short one. Um, I'll be back again next week for Workout Wednesday. Send me through your questions on Instagram or Facebook to uh, for me to go through in the next Workout Wednesday. So uh, till then, uh, good luck with your studies. Bye-bye.